Michael Ryan. I'm the <laughs> Associate Dean for Curriculum at the University of Washington School of Medicine and also the Director of the Center for Leadership and Innovation in Medical Education. I'd like to welcome you uh, to this workshop, uh, Technology Enriched Instruction. This workshop uh, is a result of a collaboration between Microsoft and our Center for uh, Medical Education, or CLIM, we call it. And uh, it's really exciting to see such a good turnout. Um, to recognize some of our folks from the Whammy region. We have people from Montana here. We have people from Alaska here. And I understand there are some people from Oregon as well. So it's great to see everyone here. I'd like to give a special uh, thanks to Michael Campion, who helped uh, organize this, and Lynn Robbins, uh, who's also uh, been working. And Stephanie Haven, Haven has done an excellent job of helping to get all the details arranged. I'd like to turn it over to Jim. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jim Pizinski. I'm the Senior Director for Worldwide Higher Education at Microsoft. And so as we begin, I'd like to introduce to you today the faculty members that you'll be working with. So first off, we have uh, Dr. John Lee. I'm John Lee. I'm an Associate Professor of Social Studies Education at North Carolina State University. I do my work in technology, digital history is my area of research. Um, I've been working with Jim and a couple other people on the leadership team for this um, for this project, the TEI project, um, David Slyfice and Mark Hofer. So I'm glad to be here today. Looking forward to working with y'all. It's going to be a hands-on kind of workshop, and, um, and we're going to have a good time doing that. And Bill McDermott? Uh, yes, I'm Bill McDermott. I'm the Dean of the School of Education at the University of North Carolina at Jacksonville. And uh, before that, uh, for eight years, I was the Boeing Professor of Teacher Education here at UW. And before that, I was in Alaska um, and for 13 years and worked with Gray Bailey in the Whammy program. He and I did some research together. Todd Zakrychuk. Hello, Todd Zakrychuk. Currently, I'm the Executive Director of the Academy of Educators at the University of North Carolina. Um, and also work in the Department of Family Medicine for fellowship programs. I'm an associate professor in that department. I started my career though as an associate, well, I didn't start as an associate professor that would <laughs> 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 very advanced. And he believes it too. <laughs> right there. So yeah, down in Southern Oregon um, as a uh, you know, psychologist in the psych department, got tenured and got promoted and then rescinded tenure and promotion and uh, moved into faculty development around 19 or 2001 and been doing that ever since. But now <laughs> doing it in the medical school. And Dr. Robin Gotti. I'm Robin Gotti, and I am a professor, associate professor of math education at the University of Washington Bothell. Um, uh, my research is in um, embodied thinking and how students think about math using technology and how technology changes teaching and learning. Standing good. So you'll, you'll see a bit of a, um, a thread here running through the people that have been selected to uh, come and work with you. Uh, and there's a North Carolina thread. I uh, went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, my undergrad, my doctorate, and then I worked there five years and then worked at Wake Forest as the Associate Dean of Graduate School uh, of Management. Uh, but we have about 20 faculty members that, that do this workshop all over the world. Uh, and we really try to get the right fit for individuals at, at various workshops. So I think that you'll see throughout the day Bill's experience and Robin's experience with the University of Washington, uh, Todd's experience uh, with medical schools, um, there's a really good fit. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do today is, is proselytize good fits with regard to technology. Uh, there are a couple things I'd like to say starting off, and that is, first off, uh, it's quite the honor and the pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure because I worked 16 years in higher ed prior to coming to Microsoft, and any time I get the opportunity to work with faculty like yourself is, is a real privilege. You, I can't tell you how excited I am to hear that there are people here from Montana and Alaska and Oregon and, of course, Washington State. And to be this enthusiastic about learning about the appropriate uses of technology uh, just really warms my heart. And then it's very much an honor because I know how very busy all of you are. Um, my wife, Robin, is a physician with Virginia Mason uh, Medical Center, and she tells me how very busy she is. So I have, I have a sense how very busy you are. So thank you very much for, for coming today. Um, a, a couple things uh, I really want to make sure you understand, and there'll, there'll be very little lecture today. There's mostly collaborative activities, working with the technology, playing with different things, and really trying to, to work together to understand this. Um, so this is probably one of the longer periods where you just kind of have to listen to folks. And we all know that with lecture, 
people under uh, uh, remember only about 20%. So here are a couple things to remember. Number one, this is not a Microsoft sales presentation. The university has all of our stuff. Um, there's nothing we can sell you. Um, most of it we give away to you. Um, so it's not a matter of, you know, we're hoping to sell another copy of Excel out here today. It's, that's just not it. But what we are deeply interested in, we have a special organization at Microsoft that is focused on education. And we have a lot of people like myself who are former educators that are really trying to help people systemically integrate technology and very appropriately integrate technology. Um, there are some times when you know, lecture works, case study works, a lot of other things with no technology, but there are times where technology can work. So that's, that's one of the things we're trying to get across today. So it's, a, it's not a sales presentation. Although we do have your account banner here in the shop in the back and you know if you do want to buy I don't know whatever it is he's the man <laughs> uh, the other thing is to really stress how important your participation is here today uh, my specialty area when I was at Wake Forest University was services marketing uh, the marketing of services as, as opposed to product marketing one of the things that I always got my students to understand rather quickly is is that you know when you do product marketing if you're selling this mouse here beautiful Microsoft mouse <laughs> if I give this to anyone in the room, it will, it will interact with you the same way no matter who you are. Now you may use it differently for different purposes, you may toss it, you may do a lot of other things, but it's, it, it's design, it's function, it's going to do the same thing for everybody. Services, if you go to Key Arena and watch uh, a rock concert um, or a basketball game, um, it, it, the experience is going to be different depending upon your mood going in there, what team you're rooting for. If we all go to the same hairstylist, um, you may have a great haircut, I may have a bad haircut, and a lot of that has to do with the instructions that we gave that person. And so this is a kind of a services kind of uh, 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 situation where a lot of it's going to depend upon how you interact with each other, how much you collaborate, how much you work. So at the end of the day, it's not just a matter of we put together a great group of faculty members and we have a, a great support from Lynn and Michael and the rest of the school, but really how much time and effort you put into this. So that's, that's really important to get across. So let me just uh, tell you a little bit about this workshop as an introduction. Uh, there are lots of reasons why do, we do this workshop. Um, there are people uh, all around the world we have done this workshop. We, we've been in, uh, John and I were in Wuhan, China not too long ago. We've done it in Jakarta, in Stockholm, Bucharest. We're in the Ukraine just before things got really kind of hot and heavy. Um, and we were in Jakarta just before some volcano uh, erupted, so hopefully nothing will happen at the UW after we <laughs> leave. Can't promise, but, but you know, the economic conditions around the world, people are trying to educate people, students better, to extend education, and we're not <coughs> building a lot of new uh, colleges and universities, so a lot of people are utilizing technology to extend what they do, to make better what they do in many different industries, and we're now starting to do that in education. The fact that so many of our students are digital, and they, they use Facebook, they use Twitter, they, they, they don't necessarily want us on Facebook and Twitter with them, but they want to use those types of capabilities, those kinds of affordances in the classroom or outside the classroom. And so that's some of the reasons why we're doing this today. Um, obviously, more and more of the, 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 the skills that are required for many professions across the spectrum uh, of the modern economy require technology. And so what better time to, to learn about it than when they're in school. Um, and then finally, the technology has really finally been, become mature enough. Um, I've been at Microsoft now 18 years, was in higher ed for 16, and every year for the last 30 years I thought, you know, we're on the cusp. It's going to really change education, this technology thing. And I'm always disappointed. I think now we are inside the cusp of major change in education, significant change in education. And, and a lot of it has to do with the technology has finally become matured. But I really believe that it's in the best interest of the faculty to drive that change rather than somebody on the outside to drive that change. And so I think we have to figure out how best to use technology. I see a lot of inappropriate uses of technology out there where people think that, oh, you know, make it into a MOOC. You know, train, teach 300,000 people at one time. Um, that's, not, that's a lot different than I think that the, the things that we do currently. And I'm not so sure that's the best thing to do. But in any case, those are a lot of the drivers um, that uh, are driving this. Now, we're 30 years into the PC revolution. Um, we have had PCs around. I mean, I, I got one when I was working on my doctoral dissertation, I think, in 1982. And an old IBM PC, uh, it was pre-XT, lasting 4 megahertz of computing power. 
But there's uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Casey Green who does this very influential survey, the Campus Computing Survey. It's now almost uh, 24, 25 years. It's the longest continuously running survey of American higher education IT use. And one of the things he has found is that he looks at the top 10 issues, and the number one or number two issue for the last 10 years is helping faculty to integrate technology into the classroom. And so even though we've had computers around for a long, long time, that's still an issue, that's still a problem. And, and too often it goes back to how we are taught as faculty members. Um, when I was taught to be a faculty member, I, I really didn't have a lot of courses in pedagogy, I didn't have any courses in technology, so if we have a mentor, uh, the, the chairman of our committee or other faculty members to watch and, and look at, well, we might have a reasonable chance of integrating this stuff called technology into our classroom. But a lot of times we don't have that. So we need things such as this workshop to at least give some thought about that. Now, there's a tremendous amount of technology out there today. Wait, I mean, this screen would have been blank um, had, had I looked at it when I was in my doctoral program, or at least close to blank. But if we don't know how the appropriate use of that, not just superficial use of that in our classroom, if we don't know how the appropriate use of that is to occur, then what happens is, is we tend to go back to our old standbys, which for many people it has to be like work. So what we did was, I have a board of about 20 faculty members from all around the world. Um, this workshop that we're doing today is not something that Microsoft came up with. Um, we, we did fund this effort, uh, but we really left it up to the faculty, as you'll see, to develop this workshop. And so it's a faculty for faculty workshop. And, and I think there are a lot of benefits to that. The real tenets for success, I think, that we have found as we've done this all over the world, is we start with what's familiar. Now, some, for some of you, we'll come at a little bit higher level, some a little bit lower level, so be patient with us. Um, but many workshops I've been to tend to try to do transformative as opposed to evolutionary change. And, and people are like, my gosh, I can't do that. You know, we've got all these specialists and we don't have the software, et cetera. So we start with some that's pretty familiar. We try as best we can, work with Lynn and Michael and others to have authentic exercises, things that you can relate to today. Collaborative, you're, you're around these round tables because you're gonna be working with these groups and you're gonna be working with other people around the room as if it was a distance learning type of activity. But it's gonna be very collaborative today. Very hands-on. Hopefully, all of you have brought a, a cell phone or a computer to work with today. If not, you can share with some other folks uh, because you're going to be using the technology throughout the day. And then we want this to be inquiry-based learning. So it's not just a matter of us constantly telling you, oh, here's the things to think about or do, but rather you're going to come up with a lot of these things because you know your content area much, much, much better than we do. So at the end of the day, we hope we've, we will have increased your awareness of the, the appropriate use of technology, as well as the breadth of technology that is out there. Um, and then hopefully you'll pass these attitudes on to your students, to other faculty members. Now, um, the uh, very last thing I'll, I'll talk about before I hand it over to, uh, to John Lee, is that we have included in this two frameworks that we'll be using today. Um, one is, uh, is 21st century learning design, and talking about 21st century skills, and the other is called TPAC, Technology, Pedagogy, and Content Knowledge. And the reason why we put these two in here is that if we just show you lots of different, although appropriate, examples of technology in teaching and learning, they may not fit the particular scenarios that you have once you leave, and you may get stuck. Whereas if we give you a framework upon which you can think about how you can apply technology to your particular area of expertise once you go forward, it'll be much better off. So we provide in this, you'll, you'll see these two frameworks. Now, we don't presuppose that these are the best or the only frameworks. You may say, hey, there's something else I would rather use, and that's fine. But as a foil for this workshop, we feel these are very appropriate. And uh, we'll be going into much more detail uh, on these today. Um, and so the last thing I'll say is that um, a lot of the technology you'll see today uh, is available to you right now, either in the University of Washington Network or in some of the free consumer apps. We'll go back and forth, and I believe uh, Robin and Michael will be talking a little bit more about that. Um, but these are foils that we can really um, help you understand how technology can be used in your, in your particular discipline. Now, you may choose to use other technology. That's fine. But I, when I went to workshops like this, it wasn't enough for me to people to generically talk about technology and concepts. I wanted to see how it was actually used. And so that's why we have included a lot of things today, a lot of Microsoft things today, in order to do that. But you may choose to use other things going forward, and, that, and that's just fine. So with that, 
I apologize for talking fast. I, I grew up in Connecticut. You know, <laughs> although I spent 20 years in North Carolina, I can have the you alls come back when I go visit my cousins and whatnot. When I get passionately excited, I talk really fast. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to John.